So a while back, I made a review of the Zeppin Micro 2 slider, and I said that it was one of my favorite sliders in that category, you know, that basic size bracket, and that still remains true to this day. I've used that slider more for personal and professional shooting than I have with any other slider that I own. It comes in at a great price point. Of course, it's made really, really well. It's very compact, so it's easy to bring with you, but because of the way it moves, it allows you to get a pretty decent uh, range of motion still, and the fluid-like damping system that's built into it allows you to get very, very smooth, consistent movements even by hand, which is something that I really, really cannot do with other sliders. Well, now they've come out with their motor for the Micro 2 slider, and this is a motor module that you can attach right to your existing slider if you already have one. You don't need to buy a whole new unit. Uh, it's not toolless. You do need some tools and a little bit of time to do it, but it's not too difficult. Uh, and you can see here, I've been using this pre-production model of the motor for about a month now, and I've used it both on uh, professional shoots and also personal stuff for YouTube, and it's worked great. It's not perfect, of course. There are some downsides to it, which we will talk about today, but I've now got the full kit, what you'll get if you buy this all together as one unit. So we're going to open this up, we're going to see what's included in here if this is how you buy it. And we'll also take a quick look at how it attaches if you buy it separately. We'll show you how it works and we will give you some examples of course, as well as talk about the pros and the cons, the pluses and the minuses, the good and the bad along the way. So let's get into it. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, please do consider subscribing. Uh, we do all kinds of unboxings, tests, tutorials, anything photo and video related. So if you like the content today, again, please do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the little bell icon when you do so to get notifications of new content in the future. Also, don't forget to find me on Facebook and like that page too because I will be posting more and more samples of clips that were taken with this slider and a whole lot more. So getting right into it, the motor module by itself should cost around $200, and if you buy the whole kit already assemble the slider and the motor together, it shouldn't cost anything more than $400. US dollars. Fluid resistance that you get here, much like the fluid head on a tripod, a video tripod, it kind of helps you to achieve that with a lot less effort. Of course, that still does take some concentration though, and if you're doing things like pulling focus at the same time, it can get a little bit more tricky and you can find yourself speeding up or slowing down and getting that inconsistent movement along the way. But if you add a motor onto there, that takes that out of the equation. You're gonna get consistent speed the whole way through. You can get repetitive movements because you can program movements into there. You can add things like a follow focus or remote follow focus, and then you can move things and you can fo pull focus completely hands off. It just opens up a lot of ways that you can use this a little bit more at the next level. They claim that this motor in particular can carry up to 4.5 kilograms in any direction, and I did find that to be surprisingly pretty close to true. I think it will depend on other variables, of course, like how that weight is positioned or, or spread out. Um, you know, you have to think about things like torque, I think putting extra strain on it, and at a certain point when you're at that 90 degree angle, just the strength of the screw that's holding it in there is going to be a little bit more scary, but I did push it to the max, perfect 90 degree angle with around a 4 kilogram setup, and it worked no problem whatsoever. There was no jittery movement, there was no slipping, uh, going upwards, going downwards, it didn't matter. It was really, really smooth and it worked just the same as when it's completely level. When I pushed it up a bit higher to a setup that was probably closer to the five kilogram mark, this one that you can see right here behind me, it did struggle a bit, especially in the upward direction. Moving downward, it actually still seemed to do okay. Uh, it didn't slip or anything, the movement was a consistent speed, but when I started to pull it back up, you could see that the gear was slipping on the motor, I guess. Uh, and it just wasn't able to pull it back up at that weight. So the 4.5 kilogram mark in any direction does seem to be the limit of what it can do, but if you're even a little bit under that or even a little bit under that 90 degree angle, you're gonna be able to handle quite a large camera setup and very, very smoothly at that. With such a small motor on such a small slider with such a large weight capacity at any direction, you'd imagine that the motor in there is gonna be insanely loud, but surprisingly, it's really not. Now you can set this up to three speeds, and at the highest speed, uh, of course, it does make some noise, and at the middle speed, it also, of course, makes a little bit more noise, but when you have it at the lowest speed, or even the middle one, I find that the noise is really quite acceptable, and when you compare it to other sliders, especially around this price point, I would consider this on the quiet side. Again, keep in mind if you go up to that highest speed, you are going to hear the noise a lot more, but even at the medium speed, I found it not to be a problem for things like interviews when you have it maybe, you know, six or seven feet away from the microphone. Now, keeping along that same theme of compact size, this can be powered by a built-in battery plate with Sony MPF-style batteries, and 
If you have something like this very small sized NPF battery, you can get probably about four hours or so out of it. Of course, there are again other factors at play, but more or less four or five hours out of one of these. And I've always only used one of these on every shoot that I've taken it on and it's worked no problem. If you step it up to a middle sized uh, NPF battery, you of course get more life out of that. And if you go for the largest size, which will still overall be a pretty compact setup, you can get like 14 or 15 hours out of one of these batteries. You can also power it with a USB power bank. However, I personally just haven't even tried that because using one of those small compact NPF batteries, it really, really adds almost zero size to this motor and there's no wires or anything and I can still get a good solid five hours out of it. The motor unit itself is really, really simple. And again, I love Love that there's no extra wires necessary to get this up and running. It just makes it easier to pack away. It makes it easier to avoid losing things or forgetting things. Uh, and there's only a few buttons on here. You can also control it with an app, which we'll get to in just a second. But uh, just in terms of operation and use, it's just incredibly simple. If you buy the motor unit by itself to attach to a slider you already have, of course, like I said, there is a little bit of a process included. It's not just plug and play. Uh, you will have to remove half of the belt, which is already on there, but it's pretty easy to do that. Um, the screws are pretty tiny, but if you look inside of the center part of that slider, you can see underneath on the top and the bottom, the belt is actually just screwed right into there. So just remove those screws and switch out those parts attaching that belt with the parts that are included with the motor. Once you do that, slide the motor on the end and the belt which is already inserted into the motor can just screw into those pieces you just attached and then screw the motor itself into the slider so that way it stays in place and you're good to go. I would love if this was completely toolless to remove and attach, but honestly, I understand why they did it this way. So that way it opens up the opportunity for people who already have the slider to just kind of upgrade their existing slider but you can also of course buy it as a unit by itself. The one downside here, and from what I understand, this is a trade-off uh, to exchange for that really high payload, is the fact that you cannot move the slider freely when the motor is attached. The power has to be on and you can only move it with the motor itself. Unfortunately, that means if your batteries die or if you forget batteries, again, you can power it with a USB power bank, which most people tend to have with them anyway, but you can't use the slider just by itself. You need to use the motor once it's attached. So there's a single button on the side of the motor which functions as the power button as well as the speed button. And there are three speeds you can set this to. On the top of the motor, you have two arrow buttons which obviously move the slider from one side to the other. And then you can double tap the power button to set A and B points. If you want to get some automated movement going that you can maybe replicate uh, two, three, four times over again or just with completely you know, hands-off operation. The buttons are pretty easy to press though in a good way. I didn't find that having my hands on the slider to operate it really interfered with the footage at all even when I was shooting like macro stuff or near macro stuff with a 100 millimeter macro lens. And I do think that they updated the newer version which I have on the table right next to me and we'll take a look at in a second to have a kind of delay. If you program movement, you can start it and it will take a second before it actually starts moving just to avoid any chance of your actual pushing the button having effect on your footage. This can also be used for time lapse, but for that as well as looped movement, you do need to use the mobile app. And at least looped movement is one thing that I do wish they would include as a function that can be accessed with the buttons built into the motor instead of having to use the app, because that's something I'd use more often. And I really don't want to have to connect to the app if I don't have to. However, that app at the moment is only available for Androids and I don't have an Android. I understand that it should be released sometime this month for iOS. And at that point, I will make another video, a dedicated video to show how that app works, uh, including things like time-lapse and looped motion. For now, let's go ahead and open up the box of the kit so you can see what's included if you buy the slider and the motor all as one unit. This is the motorized micro two, like I said. So we're gonna get this out of the box, see what is included. So you do get a nice, uh, uh, I forget what this is called, this material, ne neoprofrene, something like that. It's like a squishy uh, material, so it's flexible, but it's squishy. This is a nice case, and it looks like it should fit the entire slider, including the motor. Uh, if it didn't, that would be weird. has a couple little handles on here, uh, and a kind of a little zip tie thingy at the end where you can pull that tight to hold it in there. And this little package here comes with an Allen wrench, comes with a 3 8 uh, to quarter 20 uh, adapter screw. It comes with a USB cable. This is USB-C, so this is going to be, you know, if you want to power this via a power bank. And it comes with a couple of the little extra attachments for the belt here, which uh, I showed you already, I believe, as well as a couple extra screws and some uh, paperwork there. We're just gonna put that aside for now. This is the slider itself. And uh, yeah, it, it's pretty much identical to the original. This also does say it's a prototype, so it might be a little bit different from the final version, but I expect it's gonna be pretty much the same. On this side here on the motor, you've got the battery plate. Uh, and so you can see if you take one of these small NPF batteries and slide it in there, it's uh, pretty much the same footprint as without it. There's no release uh, for that. It's just a friction thing there. So that's that's that. 
On this side you have the power button as well as the little uh, LED lights to indicate which speed you're using it at. You have the ports for the USB and also for the cable to connect it for uh, motion time lapse and I have that cable right here. You can get different types of cable with this. I believe this is for the Canon EOS R and it seems like that's all you get in there. So just be aware that this does not come with a spare belt. So if you did want to remove this motor, you don't have the belt to go with it. So I will suggest to them that they include a spare belt just in case people get this and then want to remove the motor and use it as just a standard slider. Uh, but yeah, otherwise this is pretty much what it is. It looks pretty much identical to the original version. This is now at medium speed, and uh, I'll stop talking for a second just so you can hear the motor noise or not hear it. The microphone is really, really just right this distance away from the motor itself. Of course, it's off axis, but uh, let's see if you can hear anything on medium speed here. At this point, I think the sound of me pushing the buttons is louder than the motor itself. Let's go up to uh, the highest speed here. And then go to the lowest speed. Yeah, at this speed it's nearly silent. Again, if you want to see any more details about the actual slider itself, do check out my original review where I show everything uh, in a bit more detail there. Like I said, I've been using this for about a month now on both professional and personal shoots, and it has not let me down. The motion is incredibly smooth, incredibly consistent, uh, not shaky, not jerky, uh, even with heavier loads on there, even with macro lenses, uh, even when you have a heavy camera set up completely vertical. It's just been really, really rock solid, just as the slider has been itself over the past, I don't know how many months it's been that I've been using it, but I've used it quite a lot. There are two major downsides to this for me, and one of those I think can possibly be fixed, and that's I wish there was access to looped motion, back and forth continuous motion for something like an interview without having to connect to the app. Just I don't want to have to take that extra step for something as simple as looping the motion. The second is that if you forget your batteries or your batteries die and you don't have any alternative source of power like a power bank, then you can't use the slider at all. Again, I get that's a trade-off for being able to carry such a heavy camera. Uh, and you know, for a lot of people, I think that's gonna be a more valuable thing anyway, but uh, they chose the path that they chose and you just have to decide for yourself if that's gonna be a deal breaker or not. For me, it's absolutely not. This is incredibly easy to use and reliable and consistent, so I have no problem with it. Otherwise, for the price, the super compact size that you're still getting out of this whole package, uh, the power that it comes with, uh, the ease of use, the no need for any cables or anything like that to get this up and going. This is an incredibly, incredibly powerful little slider and it is one of the most valuable parts of my kit besides my camera and lights, of course. I bring it with me on every shoot lately and I have used it on every shoot lately, which is not something I can say for other sliders. Again, I will also be releasing another video, a dedicated video for the smartphone app when it is released for iPhone. If you do have any questions about the slider itself, check out the original review I have for the Zeppelin Micro 2. I'll put a link down in the video description and also on screen at some point during this video. If you have any questions else that are not answered in this video or that one, please do let me know down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.